Saturday turned out bright and sunny. We went on a picnic. Tommy, Helen, George and I. We wanted to make a fire, so Helen and George went to gather wood. And I went for some fresh water. Tommy, of course, tried to be helpful. But he was headed for trouble. To start our fire, George crumpled paper, because paper catches fire easily. Then he put on some twigs. Twigs get hot and burn more quickly than bigger branches. Then still bigger pieces, because it takes even more heat to start them burning. George piled them loosely so plenty of air could get to the fire. And finally, George struck the match. Really, he didn't strike the match. He rubbed it, because rubbing makes the match hot enough to catch fire. Rubbing things together makes heat. You don't believe it, do you, Tommy? Well, try it for yourself. Rub your hands together, Tommy. That's it. Rub them hard and fast. That's it. Makes them hot, doesn't it? Long ago, before matches were invented, the Indians rubbed two pieces of wood together to make fire. Pilgrim Fathers made fire by rubbing flint and steel. Our own fire needed more wood, so George put on logs. And of course, Tommy wanted to help. Too many logs may smother a fire by shutting off the air. You see, three things are needed for fire. Heat, as from a match, something to burn like paper and wood, and lots of air. And Tommy didn't believe that either. So we decided to prove it to Tommy that air is necessary for fire. First, we found some jars and cleaned them in a brook. An old candle from our knapsack furnished the fire. What about that, Tommy? So then we decided to find out what would happen with different amounts of air. In the smallest jar with the least air, 
the flame went out first. Then the middle sized jar. And the flame in the big jar with the most air lasted longest. Of course, our fire had plenty of air. And the best part of the picnic was putting the fire to work. The rest of us were too busy eating to notice what Tommy was doing. lots of things, just when you think everything is fine. I sent Tommy for water, and Helen and George for sand to smother the flames. time at all, we had the fire under control. Tommy himself knew he'd done a dangerous thing. a million matches. One match can destroy a million trees. One small match. And then a fire. Soon it's out of control. It spreads through the forest from the grass to the trees. It leaps from tree to tree, a raging giant, driving all living things from their homes leaving behind it a land empty and useless for animals and for man. Almost always from somebody's carelessness with one small match. Before going home, we cleaned up. We wanted to leave the table and grounds the way we found them. George scattered the smoldering wood so there wouldn't be anything to burn. Put on sand to shut out the air. Finally, I put on the rest of the water to cool the wood so it couldn't burn. We all had a lot of fun, all right, and all of us learned a little more about our oldest and best friend, a friend that can be our worst enemy, fire.